John Hook's Newsmaker Saturday starts now. Thanks for joining us on Newsmaker Saturday. We come to you from downtown Phoenix, 13th Avenue at Jefferson, Old Station Subs. It's been here for 37 years. The only problem is now it finds itself on the edge of that massive homeless encampment known as The Zone, home to about 1,000 homeless in Phoenix. And this has created problems for business owners, and nobody knows it better than Joe Falacci, who's been the owner here for 37 years, as I mentioned. Joe, great to see you. Thanks for doing this. We appreciate it. Okay, Joe, how bad is it out there? It's bad. It's never been this bad. There's just, there's just people everywhere that are homeless, walking around, drugged out, screaming and yelling, crazy, on fentanyl. It's very scary and very bad. You got here in 1986, right? You opened in 1986. Ev Meekham was the governor, just for a point of reference. <laughs> okay, so can you describe what, what things were like here when you opened the business in 1986? Well, there was a, there was a few homeless. You know, I, I, I think Cass was starting to evolve. But uh, there was some tents and stuff like that. And then they decided to... Uh, build uh, a big center, a big homeless shelter for people. Right. And, uh, you know, we weren't too keen on the idea because we figured there would be more homeless around, but they said they would be able to contain them and it would be better for us and safer for us and better for the homeless. When did the tent start? <sighs> well, the tents actually started before the, the court case. They would come only in November to Christmas I guess it was kind of like almost a con, in my opinion. People would come down here with tents or sleep down here because this is where the shelter was. And during the holidays, people would come and feed them and give them money and give them clothes. Wow. Okay. And what, what, what were the numbers back then? I'm thinking maybe a couple hundred. Right. Okay. So then... then know, but then they would be gone by as soon as Christmas was over. The police would come down. The city would come down. Everything would be thrown away, and they'd be gone. It so was when two, or three, two or three years they were, they were doing that. When did it start to really get bad? When that court case passed, uh, Boise, Idaho court case, 9th District Court. Right. And Phoenix is, or Arizona is under that jurisdiction. Right. So uh, once that started, I noticed some tents. But I, I didn't case, know anything about the court that case. That court case basically said you cannot roust people if they don't have a place to stay in terms of a shelter bed, right? right. So that kind of opened it up to people saying, I don't have a shelter bed, I can camp here. I don't know how they knew that. <laughs> I really don't understand it, but that's how it started. And, you know, I called this, the, uh, the, uh, the government, uh, the governor's office, and told him about it. And he said that, well, that was, wasn't their jurisdiction said it was the mayor's so I called the police the police came down and they said Joe uh, there's a case like you were talking yes. about that has passed and uh, we don't have a right to uh, make these people leave the irony of this is the state capitol is two three blocks west of us here exactly city hall is about seven blocks exactly east of us I know. the politicians are coming and going right by this every day exactly why is nothing being done do you have any theory? I don't know. Political, political situation. I mean, uh, nobody wants to bash the homeless. Nobody wants to, you know, it's, I don't know, John. But Joe, you don't want to bash the homeless. No. You, you're I'm, a compassionate guy. I feel I am. I'm not as compassionate as I used to be dealing no, with no, this. Why is that, do you think? Well, because I'm stressed. You know, I'm picking up poop and bleaching my property and... It's disgusting. You've got the tree out front that everybody urinates on. Right. So you're constantly bleaching that. Right. I'm surprised the tree's still alive, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a lot trees, of trees in Arizona are tough. <laughs> That's a tough palm tree. All right, Joe. So the, the recent ruling is that Phoenix has got to clean this place up. City of Phoenix has to end this by July. Do you believe that's going to happen? I'm praying that it's going to happen. There's rumors going around that they're supposed to clean block by block, and when that particular block is cleaned, nobody can come back, come back. and tent on that. So that, that's giving me hope. 
Uh, but again, there's a political thing going on here. Otherwise, this would have been taken care of a long time ago. Because when the powers to be want something done, it is done. It doesn't matter well, this, what it this, is. This has become kind of a third rail in the political world because you look like you're not compassionate and you don't care about those less fortunate if you go in and do a sweep, right? Exactly. Nobody wants to handle it. No, nobody wants to. 37 years you've been here. What has happened to your business, say, in the last five when this has really grown? Well, you know, it's hard to say my business has dropped off, but are state workers afraid to come down here now? Who I, I'm sure that's a big piece of your business, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, there's tents going down uh, 12th Avenue to Washington, and that started two months ago, and that never happened. And now the people that work at DEAQ are afraid to walk down that street mm -hmm. to come over here and eat. I came down here um, about two years ago. It, the encampment, we went at night. We wanted to talk to people about why they're here. Right. Um, at that time, it was about 400 people, and you'll see in this story, but we wanted to run it because we got some very interesting responses from the people who are in this situation about what goes on here. Take a look. In the hustle and bustle of the city, they almost become invisible. But just a few blocks down from Arizona's shiny Capitol Dome, you make a left turn into a four square block pocket of misery, a patchwork of tents and tarps, home to some 400 people. It looks like something out of the third world. At 69 years of age, it's tough being on the street for the first time in your life. Glenn Marine lost his hearing aid somewhere between stays in New Jersey, Boise, and Phoenix. Well, I've been in Phoenix now for two days, but I've been on the street for about three months. He was an accountant several years ago and worked on a ranch. Now he survives on Social Security. He's one of many seniors out here. He won't give me a bed, so I end up sleeping on the ground. Where are you guys going? Eating? Some offer their names. Others don't. But they're on the street. You're out here on the street. How long have you been out on the street? Tonight's my third night. What, what happened? I got up, released from prison in October. Some are out of options. Others are here by choice. They don't have rent. They don't have utilities. You know, you don't have any bills. The majority of the people out here choose to be out here. Majority? Yeah. Do they work? No. Most don't. Most of them don't. They're, they'll just go around panhandling. How much drugs? Oh, there's a lot of drugs out here. Do you think that's part of the reason? Yeah. It's a, good, it's a good part of the reason. St. Vincent de Paul provides breakfast and lunch every day. Volunteers bring food nightly. Many credit Andre House for keeping them going. George Machat took a bus from Detroit to Phoenix to stay with family. Once here, they refused him because he has warrants. They was scared that they would be like harvesting a fugitive, which I am not. Is it dangerous out here? It's dangerous. It's dangerous. George, is, does, this, does this look like America to you? No, this, this surprised me right here. This, this, this shocked me right here. He never expected to see this in Phoenix. And what I saw here, and when I got here off the Greyhound bus, no, this is not it. Down the street, we met Maria from Mexico. How long have you been living out here? For about a year and a half. What happened? <laughs> what, what, how did you end up on the street? Um, my ex-husband sold everything and uh, cheated, and he threw me out. It is really bad. All the homeless is like um, criminals and violent people. We met these two women from California. How long have you been out on the street? Since 2006, off and on. 2006? Yeah. Is it different than L.A. here? To me, uh, to me, I feel like it's worse because I ended up getting on drugs out here. But I feel like if I would have been at home, I wouldn't have got on drugs. No. What drugs? One thing that strikes you, some of the tents are very nice. For many who spent years out here, it's proof that humans can adapt to anything. 
Christmas is off. Well, I, I just put it up last night. This is my, it'll be my closet it, bathroom. I mean, are you, are you comfortable in here? Yeah, and my bed is in there. She's been out here for five years. She says her addict husband spent all of their money on drugs. Did you ever think you'd end up out here? No. There's a lot of people out here just like me. Just average people that are looking for a break. She says she's troubled by the growing number of young people here. They say, I choose to be homeless. You know, and I asked them, I said, so your life has just started and you just give up. Why do they give up? Um, I don't know. I think here it's, it's a little bit glorified. I mean, and I have to honestly say, looking around the country, people here, the homeless here are spoiled when it comes to having what they need. You know, as far as the donations that come, you know, um, as far as, you know, hygiene, your meals are all provided here. You can't help but wonder, could it be you? Could it be any one of us? That point was driven home when I came across Gary Goodman. You're living in your car? Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting myself together. And, um... You see, at one time, Gary and I worked together at Fox 10. The meth got me in trouble. The majority of people here are on, are on meth. Do you feel safe down here? Well, um, we're, yeah, I do. Because they, they look out for each other, but it's like, uh, they like their own laws, their own, like, you know, standards and stuff like that. Gary believes that half of the people want to be here. They're making good money down here. And I think they're also because they're just so used to this this lifestyle. It's like either, I don't want to say it's like they don't want the responsibility of, you know, cleaning up and, you know, progressing in life. But I think it's just it's so it's, it seems safer and comfortable. You get used to it. You get used to it. That was sobering for me to come down here and, and meet Gary, who used to work for us, who's on the street in his car. Oh, my God. Uh, you know, people end up in situations. You, in, in the time you've been here, Joe, how many people have come to you and said, hey, do you have work? Do you have a job? Since the situation with the, uh, the, the lawsuit, I'd say maybe eight or nine. And there's thousands of have people. Have you hired any of these folks? Several people. I, I have one guy that was at the shelter that is working for me now. Um, he's gotten his life together. He's getting there. Good. He's getting there. Then I had a girl that uh, she was shot by her uh, roommate and her boyfriend tried to protect her. And he ended up going to jail. And um, he went to a program, got out, went to a program, learned how to be a truck driver. And um, he's, they're moving to Florida and they came by the, yesterday to say goodbye. Wow. Yeah, so. We're going to go to break here in a, in a moment, but I just wanted to ask you, you've, you've watched this unfold primarily out, out your back door. That's really where the trouble is. Out back is, is where. Do you have any idea what is driving the numbers of people who are living on the street? Do you have a theory? Uh, this is just my opinion. Uh, I think that uh, this is where they want to be. It's a lifestyle choice. I think so. They, they found Phoenix to be very accommodating? You got it. That's a good way to think. Three squares. They're, police aren't going to rouse them. They're being enabled. They're being enabled. They, it's, you know, it's, I don't know, maybe a lot of people, they say a lot of people don't want to work anymore. What do you think will happen with these folks if, the, if and when they do this sweep and start taking people out block by block? By block? I think they're going to go to other neighborhoods. You know? I've done my time. It's been three and a half years. I want my neighborhood back. I want my neighbors to feel safe. I want my wife and my employees to feel safe. I want to come to work without having a knot in my stomach. We're here with Joe Falacci from um, Old Station Subs. He's been here 37 years in business. We're going to come back on Newsmaker Saturday. More with Joe in a minute. The owner of um, Old Station Subs, 37 years down here in Phoenix, but then the homeless encampment known as the Zone comes creeping into your world. For a while, it was a few blocks away, but now it's right on top of you, right? You're right on the edge of it. Right. Have you thought about selling? Oh, absolutely. All the time? All the time. We've had uh, several people come down. Uh, we have it for sale. I refused an offer nine years ago for 250000 for the business. I have it up for sale. I think uh, I raised it a little bit because the situation with the the New Times, you know, article has created some action. Um, this, you guys have been coming down. People have been interviewing me, so people have been curious. 
curiosity yeah. factor. What do the rest of the neighbors say? Now, how much contact do you have with the, with the neighborhood? A little bit, you know. Um, we had the guy who built the statues down there, you know, yeah. put up the... The guys that built that would come in every month. All the artwork to keep people off their front Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the guys from California that were doing this thing, they'd come in and say that you guys are the best place in town. They always came in and said hi, and yeah. we'd talk, and tell them, they would tell me all the... They were uh, vandalized twice. They stole all their electrical out of the building, $180,000 worth of damage. So how much, how much are the neighbors at this point frustrated with what's going on? Oh, they're all having nervous breakdowns. They're just yeah. stressed to the limit. There's a guy down there. He's, uh, he understood the gentrification that was coming down to Phoenix. You know, you know it. I know sure. it. Everybody's, Phoenix is booming. And he was figured, hey, man, I'm going to get into this early. You know what I mean? He actually lives on 3rd Avenue and uh, Madison in a warehouse. It's beautiful. And he's surrounded by homeless now. And he's just, he's tried so hard. He's gotten mayor and meetings and meetings. Really smart guy. Had great ideas to, to help the homeless. Yeah. And um, that they, they, that's here. Can you talk about the city of Phoenix and their response to this? It's terrible. They have not been helpful in your view. Uh, they don't even call me back. I mean, I've been here 37 years. I felt, you know, I fed a lot of important people. You know, the police chief, uh, the uh, city manager used to come in here on time. Governor Brewer used to come in here every two weeks, mm -hmm. you know. A lot of county supervisors, Mr. Hickman, you know, those guys, yeah, they all come in. But, um, you know, I don't know. It's a political, I guess, John. Do you feel that all of the emphasis is on the people living on the street and not on the people living here? Absolutely. That's the that's the rub. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you're you're one of the few people that have kind of seen this coming. I, I mean, you know what I mean? It's just, you know, we're a neighborhood. You know, there's a guy that bought the uh, art art studio down there. He lives here. He lives right above it on, like, Ninth Avenue. And he's seen people getting stabbed, and shot, and killed. And his wife, he's living up there and his wife, and they hunker down when gunfire is going yeah, on. Yeah, it's no way to live. No. no. And, and it's no way to live out on the street. I mean, no. people, I think people really do have compassion for, for these folks to, to figure it out and get their life in order. We have to figure it out. We have to, we have to have a different set. We have to reset. Yeah. You know, That's a good way to put it. You know, it's time. This isn't working, John. Police, I want to, I want to throw to some Poor sound. Police. The, yeah, the police are really caught kind of in a, in a no-win. Um, let's listen in. The, we talked to one of the officers recently, Linda Williams did, and, and it was very interesting. Take a listen. We get stuck right in the middle, and we get pulled in all directions. Um, but at the end of the day, like, we have one primary goal, and that's to protect and serve the people that are down here. So... Well, you want to talk about the, the tents and where they're set up and where they're camping, where they can't camp. Um, for me and my officers, like, we're not going to concern ourselves with that until we're given clear direction. What we are going to concern ourselves with are who are the individuals down here victimizing the people that are living down here. And those are the people that are selling drugs, um, assaulting people, charging taxes, you know, all these different things that are occurring down here that maybe are not common knowledge to the community, those are the issues we're trying to address. This is the thing. The police are in a tough spot. They're trying to manage this and get rid of the troublemakers within the zone. And we're even hearing stories that there may be people in living in tents who are paying rent now to some other entity, somebody in the zone who's kind of the godfather. The mayor. The mayor. <laughs> this is insane. It is. It's, and it, I totally believe it. I mean, it is a, its own entity. It is its own world, its own little town. So some of these tents are on what's considered prime real estate. One yeah, of the spots is right, by the church. Well, right here on 13th Avenue, you come down Jefferson, the first thing you do is you see those tents. So the people with the food, that's where they turn down. So that's prime real estate. Uh, me and my wife were here on a Sunday having lunch. Fifteen minutes, three cars stopped by and took out food to these people in the tents. Okay, the people that I spoke to when I was down here at night, they told me that during the, during the day, they hit the road and panhandle for money, for drugs, or alcohol. I mean, they were, they were very open about it. Mm -hmm. 
Is that what you're seeing? That I don't know. I don't know. Because you're just dealing with this particular area, right. but they fan out. They oh, yeah. Out. You see them all over, yeah. John. I mean, everybody sees them. They're on every uh, would you overpass. Give, would you give to those people, or do you think you're never. just feeling the addiction? I would never give to those people. Never. Because I see where it ends up. It ends up over here. The, the magnet here is the food, primarily, right? You've got some shelter beds, but they can't accommodate all of this. They've got a 1,000 people on the street. So the three meals a day, if somebody down here is telling you they're hungry, you're not buying that? Nope. Not, not from what I've seen. Like I said, I was here on Sunday, one Sunday with my wife, and we were eating outside, and three cars within 15 minutes stopped and gave them food. That's can, in 15 minutes, John, on a Sunday. Can you talk about when the chains went up, these chain chain link, uh, you know, you see them all over the place down here. That's to keep people from squatting on the property. Right. Not only squatting, meaning they're going to take it as their property, but also going to the bathroom in there. Right. Has it worked? Mm, not, not that good. No. Not that good. Do you think you're going to get relief? And if you do, does the whole situation change down here? Well, yeah. I mean, absolutely. I think I can, you know, John, I'm 70. You know, I've been here You're 37. Good. Thank you. I <laughs> appreciate <laughs> you. I'm right behind you, buddy. Yeah, yeah but you're slim. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, my wife's a good cook. What can I say? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's, I'm 70. You know, I, it's, it's time to walk around the lake. It's time to hold my wife's hand and just go down. We bought a house in Prescott. She is, she's leaving. She doesn't want to do this no more. You know, but I've got to keep on going until somebody will come here and, and buy the place. And like I said, it, it's a gold mine. I put two kids through private school from grade one. To, wow. My son went to Brophy. My daughter went to St. Mary's. My son went to ASU. You know, it's a little sandwich shop just for lunch five days a week. But, you know, nobody wants that back there. Yeah. And I don't blame You've them. You've done well. And, and yeah, yeah, I, and I can well. tell your patience has kind of run out. Uh, um, for the people who come onto your property, how do you deal with that? Uh, you like, got to be careful. Come, come, right? Coming into the restaurant, well, I'm a lot older and a lot wiser. Uh, I kind of, somebody sits down over there, I go out there and I go, you got to leave. You can't be here and they'll look at me like... Do you worry for your safety? Sometimes. Do you think that it's become more dangerous down oh, there? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, 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 one guy almost hit me. This is for another show, but I would love to see the track of fentanyl and homelessness because I think I actually believe there may be a nexus between the two yeah I think you're because right we've seen the fentanyl thing happening we're seeing this homeless population explode and I think that's not by accident yeah. I haven't seen the data on it but it really makes me wonder oh you know, yeah I agree with you it's definitely a drug problem a huge drug problem but like you said it, it, it's almost like a fourth fourth level of society you know rich middle class poor and now homeless mm -hmm. and uh, we have to uh, change like I said we have to change our we have to reboot we have to get back to some of the old ways people you know have to be responsible for their lives we can't take care of everybody we can't take care of the world we got to take care of the people that are our family Joe thank you so much it's great seeing you I appreciate you spending some time with us thank opening you, your John. place up to us the food's great everybody loves it so come on down to old station subs <laughs> hallelujah Joe Falachi thank you <laughs> Joe appreciate it we'll be, we'll be back in a second on Newsmaker Saturday <laughs>